Monster Hunter is a multi-generational and platform game franchise which seems to be complex but has a very simple nature. Take your sword and hit a monster until it dies, letting you carve the monster to make your sword bigger and sharper, letting you hunt bigger and tougher monsters, wash, rinse, and repeat until you're hunting monsters that are classified by quest names as World Eater. Now, don't be confused or be under the impression that it's all simple. There is a need for some serious planning when you hunt, if you want to be effective or even stylish. Originally niche, the advent of Monster Hunter World, which was aimed to capture the Western audience, the popularity of the franchise skyrocketed and saw the game release on multiple platforms. And the follow-up DLC, Iceborne, introduced more new monsters and brought back some classics. This spring, we'll see Monster Hunter return to Nintendo with Monster Hunter Rise. Back in 2011, Tamashii Nations released the first figure in the SH Monster Arts line, Godzilla. Bandai didn't take on the video game property dedicated to monsters until early 2015 with a transforming diecast Rathalos. Cool concept, but we wouldn't see SH Monster Arts monsters until 2020, not even in their now non-existent D-Arts line. With Bandai releasing Nargakuga and Rathalos already, you can find order links in the description of this video, and they have teased Zenogre. There's an endless supply of monsters for Bandai to go after and make, and there's a perfect hype train with a new game coming out. Hello collectors, it's Steven here, and welcome to my top 5 list of monsters from Monster Hunter to be made in the SH Monster Arts line. This list will be a bit touchy for some, but coming up with the list, we have a few concepts in mind. 1. No inherent requests for repaints. There are some monsters which have repaint potential, such as having subspecies, and if a species already has a figure, the subspecies or rare subspecies, it's not going to be on the list. However, if there is a monster that is on the list, the subspecies helps to validate why it's on there. So for an example, let's say if Rathian should be on the list, the pink Rathian will help to validate why the Rathian is on the list, but I'm not going to put pink Rathian on the list. Number two, historical value. Some monsters, they're just household names. They gotta be on there. Number three, this is going to be the last one, they'll sell because they're just that damn popular. Now, I'll agree, there are some monsters that I want on this list too, but there are others who I feel will help the line prosper. They deserve the spot a bit more. Number five, we have the king of the skies, now we need the queen of the land, Rathian, to go with Rathalos. Her iconic status in the franchise is nearly on par with Los, and I would argue sometimes Ian is a bit more difficult than Los. Plus, for Bandai, she has a pink subspecies and a gold rare subspecies. And then let's not talk about Frontier, which makes for prime repaint material. She has fireball attacks, including one huge nuclear blast, so she can reuse effect parts already made, or they can make new ones. Should Bandai continue the SH Monster Arts releases, we'll see Rathian sooner or later, I feel but she's not made yet, and she still needs to be made. She's taking the fifth spot. Number four. Introduced in the world base game and reaching popularity quickly, one of the flagship monsters, Nergigante. In Iceborne, we have a variant, the Ruiner Nerg. It was introduced, opening up repaint possibilities as well, and maybe retooling a bit, but still. Nergagante here is a rather great checkpoint in the game, teaching hunters how to play or forcing them to get good. Nerg is an elder dragon, so he is large and in charge. Featuring the possibility of a special flight stand, spike shooting effect parts, severed tail, and even broken horns for accessory, this eater of elders should get more than the Ichiban Kuji A prize figure. By the way, this won't be the last eater on this list. Number 3. Tiger Rex. What else needs to be said? Tigrex. But apparently, Tigrex? Pronunciation be damned, this orange and blue striped wyvern features a similar body to Nargakuga already made, and it is the flagship monster of Portable 2. A powerhouse in its own right, 
Tigrex could come with roaring effect parts, his roar damages hunters, different option parts for boulders he can throw because depending on the environment the rocks are thrown, like ice ones in the tundra or molten ones in the volcano, we have a severed tail option and damaged body parts including heads and wings. Also, the Tigrex family gets a little red when angry. Note that I said family. There's the brute subspecies, shown here, and a rare subspecies, the molten T-Rex. Plenty of chances for Bandai to repaint and to reuse the mold. I'd like to take a quick break here to remind everyone, if you like the monsters you've seen so far, Monster Hunter World is available on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, with Monster Hunter Rise to be released soon on the Switch, March 26th. Links in the description if you want to hunt the monsters. Also, I play World and will be getting Rise, and I do stream often when I play, so if you want to join in the hunt, drop in the comments that you're interested, and maybe we can connect sometime so this way we can hunt together. Number 2. The Great Red Dragon and the Woman Clothed in Sun. We have Safi Jiva. The monster was introduced relatively recently into the Monster Hunter world, but it defined Iceborne's meta, and this monster captured the hearts and time of many hunters. Bandai has dabbled with larger figures, and while some other ones like Jenny, Fatty, Lau, if you know you know, have the crown of being larger and more well-known with longtime fans, Safi came in thundering with laser beams, needed strategies to advance the siege, a memorable arena, and let's not forget the OHKO move where it drops the Soul Punisher in the center of the arena and if you're not standing behind a rock slightly bigger than you, you're dead. Safi is large and absolutely going to destroy your shelf and Bandai should not deny Francis Dollarhide's great becoming in the SH Monster Arts line. This red dragon needs to be on our shelves, so Bandai, get to it. Number 1. You knew it was coming. There was no one else who it could be. The one monster they should have led with, Devil Joe. The de facto Godzilla of the Monhan franchise, Devil Joe is equally loved and hated by every hunter who has played since Try on the Wii. This invader gained a variant in three ultimate, the Savage Devil Joe, which would be an easy retool for Bandai to get another version of on the market. Web exclusive? The Brute Wyvern could come with a severed tail part, damaged chin, and he has a dragon breath effect that as Savage Joe and Iceborne got a much worse and more creative variant. This is the perfect choice for the lineup due to the infamous nature of the monster and that kaiju fans couldn't say no to this Godzilla inspired monster. Bandai, we're not asking for you to hold the pickles this time. Please, hurry up and give us the gel. And that's about it. We're bound to get some repaints of the existing releases or teases since there are legitimate new monsters and easy to make that have some subspecies, but here are the top 5 monsters that Bandai should make in the SH Monster Arts line. Like I said earlier, there are some others that I would add, but thinking critically, I think these would keep the line going so we can get some other oddball ones. And who knows what monsters they may introduce into Rise anyway. Or some very popular ones that they may bring back, which, yeah, <laughs> Bandai will definitely cover. Anyway, what monsters do you want to see in the SH Monster Arts lineup? Drop in the comments down below your thoughts. At this time, I'd like to thank the patrons who have helped out this last month with these special end cards, and thanks to them, I can take risks with special videos like this. And if you're really thinking about it, this is specifically what Patreon is for, helping out with these different video types that may not do very well with the algorithm or on the channel. And now here's the other end card with some other videos of mine to check out. Maybe a review of the Wrath of Meow Rathalos tank? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.